Hello, very good evening to you all. Um, my name is Ben, I'm one of the ministers here, uh, and I'm also the chaplain at Yeovil College. And during this uh, December, I've been running a bit of an experiment with the students at college, um, and I'd like to run the same experiment with you, uh, if that's okay. And the question I've been asking the students is, what do you say at this time of year? Are you a Merry Christmas person? Or are you a season's greetings person? Um, can we take a poll? Hands up, Merry Christmas. Anyone a season's greetings sort of a person? No, you wouldn't be in church, would you? Oh, you're just playing devil's advocate. Um, and then I've asked the students, um, what's the difference between the two? Season's greetings and Merry Christmas. Well, it's someone's name is in one of the greetings and their name is not in the other. Christ is in Christmas. Christmas is all about Jesus. Are we wishing people a merry Jesus time, or would we rather leave his name out? Um, and I've got a list of things here that, uh, that over centuries people have believed or not believed, a list of beliefs. Um, there's a chap called Glenn Scrivener who's written a wonderful book on all these things. Um, and... I'm going to put them in the yes pile or the no pile. I'm going to ask you what you think. Um, the first one is, do you believe in science? Should that go in the yes pile? Yes, it's going in the yes pile. Um, number two, do you believe in consent? Yes, the Me Too movement um, was good. Uh, do you believe in freedom? Freedom of belief? Yes. Do you believe in humility? Do you believe that humility is a positive attribute or a negative attribute? Positive, that's a good one. Um, do you believe in service, likewise, that service is a good thing? Yes, I'm getting some nods. Um, do you believe in equality? Yes. Yes, Pyle. Do you believe in compassion? Yes. We've answered yes to all of those. That's really odd. Um, now, let's just pause for a moment and say that that is actually odd, that we have said yes to all of those. If we take a survey of human history and different cultures and different places it would be odd to say yes to all of those things, wouldn't it? Have you ever wondered why you believe the things that you believe? Why have we, collectively as a group, all said, yes, they're all right? Now, when we ask people uh, this, the, the answer that comes back, it's, that's just the obvious thing. It's self-evident, it's just right. But why? Why would we say it's right and 2,000 years ago, most of these people would say, no, don't believe those. Well, this bothered a historian called Tom Holland. He was born near here and um, went to school in Dorset. He's written a brilliant book called Dominion. The subtitle is making, The Making of the Western Mind. And he asks that question, why do we believe what we believe? He investigated the history carefully and concluded that all these beliefs come from the same source. Anyone want to guess what that is? Here's a clue. I've got a dog collar on. <laughs> We're all sat in a church, and we've just had a Bible reading. Um, Jesus. They all come from Jesus. Um, Tom Holland is a very interesting guy. He, he does a, a really good podcast called The Rest is History. And he's wrestling with, with this. Um, he, I'm not sure if he's a Christian quite yet, but he is definitely thinking about it. Now, it's right that we look back at history accurately, and I'm grateful for historians who do. Um, it's not right to, to sort of think of church history as everyone was a Christian before 1960. Everyone went to church and was a Christian um, it's not like that. It's always fluctuated 
uh, in time over the centuries in our country and in other countries, but generally, the teaching of the Bible has had a huge impact on us as Western people. Let's take an example. Um, Equality. The slave trade uh, was abolished in this country in 1807 to huge cheers in Parliament. William Wilberforce, who campaigned so strongly to abolish slavery, did so with arguments that were theological, biblical, Christian. He had two main points, that the slave was a human being and made by God, therefore equal with everyone else. The slave could also be a Christian believer. Therefore, they had the same value as anyone else. Jesus died for them. Jesus died for the free person. They both have the same value of Jesus' blood. Before Jesus' teaching, it was more often argued that some people are stronger and therefore of more value, that some people are more intelligent. Some are born of high birth, some of low. Even amongst slaves, some are able to labour longer and harder than others and therefore have more value. When we say things like that now, we're thinking, that's awful, that is horrible. How can you believe that? The reason we think that is because of centuries of the Bible being lived out. Um, But we're odd. Uh, Another example is humility. Uh, The Greek word was humilitas. There's a historian called John Dixon who has tracked the use of that word uh, throughout history. And he discovered that it used to be an entirely negative word, that you were a low person of low birth and of low value. You were the humble person. It was nearly entirely used negatively. And then, at a point in history, it was flipped and was then used entirely positively. Humility is a good thing. Can you guess when that change happened? It happened as the church grew in the Roman Empire and the stories of Jesus were being told. That that is the story that we saw in our Bible passage. That is the story of Christmas. It's a story of humility, where the world could see that humility was beautiful. And we have a comparison between Herod, the king of the Jews, and Jesus, the king of the Jews. Herod was scrambling for power. He was threatened by a new king who was on his way. And that was his job. And so he used his power to hold on to more power and set about a plot to kill this baby who might one day be king. It's a story as old as time. Jesus was the exact opposite. He had real power. He made the world. He was the word by which all things came into being. Nothing exists at all that he did not make. He is the sovereign God of heaven. And he came down to earth. Not to be born as a high king or a prince or even in a mansion or a semi-detached house or even a studio flat, but in a stable and he was placed in a manger, an animal's feeding trough. That's humility. It is, the, it is power like a robe that is taken off and laid down. And we look at that story that has been told many times, and we go, that is a beautiful story. It is amazing that God did that. And Herod, who did the opposite, that is ugly. Jesus laid down his life so that sinful people like me could be forgiven. 
And he was a servant king, that idea of service. We love that idea in this country. What's the organisation called that looks after our health? The National Health Service. If you get a bus, it is, it is, what do we call it? It's the bus service. Rishi Sunak's job title, he's the prime minister. Minister just means servant. He's the first servant. My job title is a minister, I'm a servant. Our dearly departed queen, we loved her so much because she was a servant queen. She used her power in service of people. And that was Jesus. He was the ultimate servant king. He laid down his glorious crown in heaven and he put on a crown of thorns. He came into this world and he went willingly to the cross. Now, it's worth asking the question, and maybe you're thinking this, why have I said all this? Why have I said that the reason that we all believe what we believe, whether you're a Christian, professing, coming to church or not, is because of Jesus Christ, who was from Nazareth, born in Bethlehem. Um, I've not said this because I'm sort of longing for the good old days. Um, I'm not too worried about the state of church. You will have seen that um, church numbers are going down. Um, I'm not too worried about that. I believe in a sovereign God who can walk on water. Um, his church is in his hands, and he says that it will be fine, and I, I believe him. But there are two thoughts which I would like uh, to leave you with um, to consider uh, today and tomorrow as you eat your turkey. The first is, I just want to prick your curiosity that Jesus has perhaps had a far bigger influence in your life than you could ever have imagined, whether you believe in him or not. I would love for you to just have a glimpse of his goodness that we see all around us in ways that maybe we've not spotted before. All these things that we value so much have come from his teaching. They've been taught through the church, sometimes well, sometimes not so well, but they've been there. And they've been an amazing blessing to us and to our society. The Christmas story is a story of God's goodness coming into the world of God humbling himself to be born a human in Bethlehem, to live amongst us, to teach us, to love us, and to die for us. And I just want to give a little window that that goodness, that he has, all that he has done, is perhaps bigger than we've ever thought. Um, the second thing that I'd like us to ponder uh, is this, and this one's a bit more of a challenge. There is a growing disconnect between holding on to the things that Jesus teaches and holding on to the person of Jesus. We've disconnected those two things. Um, without really thinking about it, and I want to say that's bad for us, and it's just bad generally. Um, I think a good way to, to think about it is, uh, uh, is like this. Uh, someone once asked Jesus, what are the most important commands in God's law? And Jesus says that there are two of them. Now, before I tell you what they are, um, in our world today, if you believe, if you don't believe one of them, there's, there's two. There's one that if you don't believe, you're, you'll be considered a, a nutter, a weirdo, even immoral. The other one, if you do believe it, you'll be considered a nutter, a weirdo, maybe even immoral. Um, does that make sense? Let me tell you what they are. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. 
That's the one that makes you weird if you believe it. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. That's the one that makes you weird if you don't believe it. Imagine Christmas lunch tomorrow, extended family sitting around. The topic of conversation is, what is the most important way to live your life? What is the most important law? If someone said, love others like yourself, we would all go, yes, very wise. Where did you come up with that? Um, It just came to me one day. Um, If someone said, love God, then the dinner table gets a bit strange. Those inner alarm bells are set off. Someone's mentioned religion at the dinner table. Um, But there's a way to say that. You could say, you mean love your God, and then we'll be all right. No, I mean the one and only God of the Bible. Can you feel that? It is weird, isn't it? Um, And that's what I would love us, uh, uh, love to leave you with, is that tomorrow you will exchange gifts. You will give gifts and you will receive gifts. But wouldn't it be strange if by the end of the day, the gifts that you've received, you love those but don't want anything to do with the person that's given them to you. Yeah, maybe that's happened already. Wouldn't that that be strange? And the best thing about Christmas is that you get to know the one who gives all these good gifts. And his name is Jesus Christ. And you can know him personally. And it's glorious and it's wonderful. And we talk about him here every week at church on Sunday. Um, And my heart response to Christmas echoes that of the wise men. Let me remind you what they did in our passage. It says, On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They bowed down and worshipped him. They had found the most wonderful and precious thing in all the world. A little baby, Jesus Christ, their king. I don't mind being the weirdo. I'm going to be a happy weirdo. Let me pray. Dear Father, we thank you so much for the Lord Jesus that he came to us and he came with so much goodness that we can see in our world and he gave himself to us as well. Lord, please help us to rejoice in him. Please help us to know him and uh, to understand him better. In your name we pray. Amen.